The apnea guard uses a patent pending design to advance the lower jaw and the tongue to treat obstructive sleep apnea. Apnea guards can be quickly, easily, and inexpensively fitted. With a little practice, the steps needed to screen, fit, and adjust can be performed in less than 15 minutes. The apnea guard incorporates fine adjustment increments necessary for optimal therapeutic benefit and previously available only in custom fabricated appliances. Clinicians can use the apnea guard to determine if a patient will receive therapeutic benefit from oral appliance therapy prior to prescribing a custom appliance. The apnea guard can also be used to manage post-operative OSA severity or while patients are taking narcotic pain medication. Included with the apnea guard is a dental history and patient consent form. The form begins with the patient's name and gender, followed by four questions to identify patients with contraindications for use. Next on the form is a field for noting the patient's tongue size. Learning to recognize a larger tongue is important for selecting the appropriate size apnea guard. Begin by having the patient drop their jaw fully open and stick out their tongue so that the tip rests on the bottom edge of the lower lip. Both the jaw and tongue should be relaxed and not exaggerated or retracted. Proportionally large tongues can be identified by prominent scalloping or indentations on the sides caused by teeth. Little or no scalloping on the sides is indicative of a normal sized tongue. With the patient's tongue size determined, mark the appropriate selection on the form. The apnea guard comes in three sizes, low, medium, and high, with increasing space between the upper and lower teeth. Increasing the vertical height can provide additional room for larger tongues to advance. This reduces OSA severity when patients sleep on their back and lowers the risk of TMJ pain. Sizes can be found by examining the embossed lettering on the front corners of both upper and lower trays. Arrows can be found here that indicate which tray faces up. Use this chart as a guide for selecting the appropriate size apnea guard. Patients should be fitted with the smaller of the two sizes unless they will be sleeping regularly on their back or have a larger tongue. With the proper size now selected, circle the appropriate field on the dental history and patient consent form. Next, you will provide the patient with the included instruction sheet and make sure that they understand the possible side effects. During the first few days of use, patients may feel tooth or muscle soreness when they first wake up. They may also find that their teeth don't quite align the same. These symptoms are common and should resolve by the end of the morning. Moving the jaw from side to side and back and forth will help alleviate the discomfort. Excessive drooling during sleep is a symptom that goes away after some use. Dry mouth during the night occurs because the apnea guard handle can cause mouth breathing. This problem is resolved once a patient is transitioned to a custom appliance. Instruct patients to discontinue use of the apnea guard after 29 nights. Use of the device should be halted if any part of the appliance breaks, becomes detached, or the retention material starts to fail. With the form completed, have the patient confirm the accuracy of the information they provided with a signature and date. Included with the apnea guard kit is a laminated work table designed to simplify the fitting procedure. Begin by sanitizing this table with an alcohol wipe. On the work table, you will find four circular areas to place the retention material in preparation for the fitting. The retention material will not set properly if it comes in contact with latex. The apnea guard retention material requires equal parts of a blue base and a white catalyst which are mixed together. The amount of each material is carefully controlled with a custom sized scoop included in the apnea guard kit. Each side of the scoop is labeled with either a C for catalyst or a B for base. Make sure to use the appropriate side of the scoop for each material type to avoid activating the contents of the tub. The scoop should be thoroughly cleaned with an alcohol wipe prior to each use. Use the edge of the container to level off any excess material. Extra caution must be taken to make sure it is both completely filled and leveled flat across the top. Too much material will cause excessive drooling or reduce the space available for the tongue to advance forward. Not enough material may compromise retention of the appliance during sleep disordered breathing events. Place the material from both base containers on the work table, each in its own circle. Base should always be prepared prior to handling any catalyst, as residue may be deposited on the gloves which could prematurely activate the material. 
Now using the same process, prepare both amounts of catalyst on the work table. The next step is to locate the patient's fitting setting. Have the patient rinse out their mouth if they have eaten since the last time they brushed their teeth. Begin by pulling off the lock cover. Lift up on the lock to remove it. Insert the apnea guard and press forward gently so both of the trays are snug against the front teeth. The trays should be held lightly in place so they can slide freely. Ask the patient to relax their cheeks and lips around the apnea guard, and then tap their teeth a few times to allow the jaw to settle into the neutral position. Now, look down on the handle and note the first number visible at the edge of the top tray. In this example, the correct fitting setting is 7 because it is fully readable and 8 is partially covered. Repeating the steps to determine the fitting setting once or twice is recommended until a consistent result is achieved. To fit the lower tray with the retention material, lock the apnea guard into the fitting setting plus 4 millimeters. Using the previous example, the lock should be set at 11. The lock is designed to be bi-directional for either odd or even numbers. Adjust the tether to the end that allows the arrow on the lock to face towards the patient's fitting setting. With the apnea guard locked at the fitting setting plus 4, place the device on the apnea guard work table with the bottom side up as you will be preparing the bottom tray first. You will have 1 minute and 30 seconds to mix the material, distribute it into the tray, and insert the apnea guard into the patient's mouth. Begin by kneading the blue base and the white catalyst together until reaching a uniform color. This step should take no more than 30 seconds. Roll the retention material into a tube using the apnea guard work table to measure the length. Carefully move the tube into the lower tray. Avoid stretching the length of the material while making the transfer. Press the material down into the retention posts. Use your thumb and finger to create a 90 degree angle on each end. Up to this point, you should have used no more than 1 minute and 15 seconds since you first started mixing the material. Now instruct the patient to insert the apnea guard by first pressing the front of the upper tray against the front of the upper teeth, then center the handle, and finally, bite firmly into the lower tray until both upper and lower teeth are making full contact with the respective trays. Instruct the patient to use their tongue to smooth the retention material along the inner walls of the lower tray. It takes 3 minutes after the 1.5 minutes of working time for the retention material to fully set. Ask the patient to remove the apnea guard and offer them a tissue to wipe away saliva. A good retention mold is critical for proper performance of the apnea guard. Here are a few things to look out for after preparing each tray. The patient did not fully bite down into the material, which often occurs when the material's working time was exceeded and results in poor retention. The teeth were pressed against the front of the tray, which can occur if the 4 millimeters were not added to the fitting setting and results in patient discomfort. The retention material was not thoroughly mixed, which can occur if a uniform color was not reached and results in a reduced life of the appliance. Too much material was used, which can occur if base or catalyst were improperly measured and can result in excessive salivation. The patient did not have the handle centered, which occurs if the patient bit down before centering the appliance and can result in increased tooth discomfort. And lastly, sharp edges were created, which can occur if the patient does not use their tongue to smooth out the material. With a good lower tray now made, follow the same procedure to prepare and distribute the retention material into the upper tray. With the top tray facing up, remove the lock, Slide the upper tray forward 4 millimeters and reinsert the lock into the fitting setting. Mix the material to a uniform color, distribute it evenly across the device, form the 90 degree angle in the back and create a slight trough in the middle. Remember, you must complete all of these steps within 1 minute and 15 seconds from the start of mixing the material. To set the retention material for the upper teeth, ask the patient to first insert their teeth into the lower tray then bite firmly into the upper tray. As before, they should smooth out excess material along the inside edge of the upper tray with their tongue while keeping their jaw still as possible. After three minutes, the patient can remove the appliance for inspection. The same set of conditions applies to the top tray as it did the bottom. A bit of excess material beyond the tray is acceptable. In most cases, the apnea guard is now fitted. With both trays molded, the apnea guard is now ready to be adjusted. 
Begin by removing the lock so that the trays are allowed to slide freely. Ask the patient to insert the apnea guard and relax their jaw while tapping lightly several times to achieve the neutral jaw position. Looking down on the handle, note the first fully readable number after the edge of the top tray. This number is their neutral jaw setting. Write the number down. Now ask the patient to protrude their lower jaw forward as much as possible. This number is their maximum setting. Since neutral and maximum settings are used to determine the optimal advancement, obtaining these measurements should be repeated to ensure the results are consistent. Ask the patient to remove the apnea guard, and with a narrow tip pen, write the neutral and maximum values on the upper tray handle. Next, refer to the apnea guard work table to calculate the optimal advancement setting. Start at the column that corresponds with the neutral setting and then go to the row that corresponds with the maximum setting. This value represents 70% of maximum protrusion. Write the 70% value on the upper tray handle and lock the apnea guard at this setting. Then have the patient insert and wear the appliance for 2-3 to three minutes. If the patient feels it is too uncomfortable after 2-3 to three minutes of wearing the apnea guard at the optimal setting, reduce the advancement by 1 millimeter. Then after the patient has worn the appliance for 4-5 to five days, the apnea guard should be returned 1 mm to the full 70% protrusion in order to achieve optimal therapeutic results. Consider teaching the patient how to remove the handle cover and lock and read the adjustment setting. Refer them to the optimal setting that is written on the handle. Once an acceptable advancement setting is achieved, tuck the lock tether under and push the cover over the handle. Lastly, instruct the patient on proper care for the apnea guard. Patients should always brush and floss their teeth before inserting the apnea guard. Poor dental hygiene during use will increase the likelihood of teeth movement and reduce the useful life of the apnea guard. The apnea guard should be rinsed with cold water and allowed to air dry. Propping the apnea guard upright is recommended for effective drying. Using a toothbrush, toothpaste, or hot water should be avoided. With the proper care explained, the patient is now ready to begin using the apnea guard.